So here we are at the uh, base camp by the Laguna Ochco. So we're about 5,200 meters or so. Like this would have been an ideal base camp. I mean, the scenery, access to these peaks, and uh, just the really good bouldering. I mean, there's a great stash of boulders right here. You could just wake up, go bouldering, and then hump a load to ABC or whatever. But anyway, the long and the short of it is, is we've been here a little bit longer than two weeks. The burrows could not make it up to uh, Ochco here because uh, there was no trail. Um, had some issues with water also, uh, with uh, getting uh, you know the burrows watered and so on. So anyway, we did the base camp down in the valley about, I don't know, must be 2,000 feet lower in elevation. And originally, Mick and I wanted to attempt a route on this aspect of Waskaran behind me. And, you know, one of the things is the glaciers have been drying up. Uh, a lot of this is due to climate change. And so just to cross a dry glacier that no longer has ice, it's like uh, doing this weird, loose kind of minefield of talus the size of your fist to uh, house-sized blocks. Really easy to break a leg, and it's just incredibly time-consuming and tedious. Having gotten a look at the glacier below Waskaran, it's just a real mess, and it's really dangerous and all the rock and ice fall that uh, we've heard while up here, 99% of it comes off of Waskaran. And so, you know, after attempting to establish base camp here, we decided on one down below. The access and view of the mountains from our base camp uh, made us decide to attempt this unclimbed east face of uh, uh, Chopakalki instead. So behind me you can see kind of the line through the central kind of triangular face. Um, yesterday we just got down after spending yeah, probably a six day round trip reconnoitering the approach, establishing a, a, an ABC, and then we probably did three solid days of climbing on the face. I think if you add it up from, you know, where the glacier starts uh, to the summit, we probably got two thirds of the way up. Um, did run out of food, which uh, was a, like a real factor. The weather was changing, which made me really nervous. And the um, fresh snow that's still on the face there from four or five days of storm, that really made the climbing brutal. I mean, uh, when you hit Andean climbing right, you're either climbing in someone's steps or you're climbing in Neve. You can move really fast, even with a heavy pack. This stuff is like wading through corn and sugar and breakable crust. And, um, also finding limited protection options, so not only was it exciting and kind of dangerous, um, you know, there's objects falling down, there's these avalanches coming down, um, but the, the main thing was like, it's just the style of climbing is brutal. It, We've all heard that old saying that Eskimos have a hundred names for snow. You know, looking back, the Incans must have had dozens of names, because on a peak like this you have solid water ice, you got this ancient glacial ice, you got this stuff that feels like styrofoam every time you whack your tool into it. And you also get these weird atmospheric rhyme things and these, these shapes that look like gargoyles. But what we found most of up there was the nasty stuff, and it was this deep bottomless sugar snow. It, it, it just felt like wading through molasses. So in a six day round trip, we experienced dangerous avalanche conditions, falling ice. Um, Nick even got hit by a pretty nice chunk of ice. We also had to wade through deep debris left by the heavy storms. We also ran out of food, which forced us to retreat about four pitches from the summit ridge. It's kind of a bummer, but we all know that alpinism is a gamble. We know the suffering is great. We know that the rewards are few, but when it's good, it's the best. <laughs>